The Welcome to the Show podcast is independently produced by me, Manny Gomez, and CT. Help people to find our show by taking two minutes to leave a five-star rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you. What's up, everybody? It's the Welcome to the Show podcast. CT, what is good? What's happening? We're here, man. First place, 16 games ahead of the Red Sox, about 10 oh, games ahead of the whoa, Tampa Bay Rays. Whoa. We're taking this shit all the way this year, son. Ooh, you came on fire today, man. Show did. I kind of like it, but I also <laughs> kind of don't like it because it's, you know, it's it's going against my team. Do you know, do you you know, know what? Do you know what but it you is? you know what, Manny? Yeah, yeah, but yeah go, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Five straight for the Boston Red Sox. Oh, wow. Probably going to make... I mean, we're running into a tough opponent in the in the Phillies today because they're hungry. Mm-hmm. They want that. They want that division spot mm-hmm. right now. Them, the Mets. Right now, it's the Mets, Marlins. I mean, Marlins, Mets, this, Nationals, and Philly all fighting for that wild card spot. I think the Nationals are already on there, two games up. But then the Mets and the Phillies are both two games back of the second wild card. Mm. And then you got the Braves, man. So that you division's know, nuts, man, nuts. So we got the the Yankees are playing the Oakland A's uh, in a three game series in Oakland. You know what I'm doing if I'm the Yankees right now? I'm just gonna I'm gonna just say here you go A's, just win these games. Yeah, okay. Just keep Boston out of this shit. Speaking of the A's, what a disappointment Chris <laughs> Davis has been. I I dropped his ass over the I weekend. I saw that man, and I flirted with picking him up today, but I realized that he he's strictly a DH, so you can't really do much with him. Yeah, and you know I love Chris Davis. Sure do. He's your I twin. love. Chris, yeah, okay. I love Chris Davis, but honestly, man, like he, even if he bounces back, I, I can't even. I, I'm not gonna be like upset already because it's, there's only like a month left of baseball. Like, what is that gonna do? You know. And in the, in the juiced ball era, that this guy doesn't have 40 home runs already is surprising. Yeah. Um, and he's did he sign, did he sign an extension in the off season or something? That's a great question. I'm on I'm on his baseball reference right now, and it looks like he signed through 2021. He got sixteen five this year, sixteen seven fifty uh, each the next two seasons. So it looks like it's an extension yeah. to me. Um, and it looks like he's going to end his streak of batting two forty seven. He's bat he's he's hit two forty seven over the last four straight seasons, and his spring training batting batting average is two forty seven. Currently, he's hitting two twenty two. He only has seventeen home runs and fifty three RBI. So he's going to break his streak of forty and a hundred. I wonder what's going on. Like, is, did he did he um, deal with any injuries this year? Like, did he have some sort of oblique or hamstring? Like, yeah, in the beginning of this season, I would say like maybe like less than a month in, or maybe like a little bit more than a month in. He they actually had him out there. I think his first game playing outfield, he he ran down a foul ball playing left field and ran into I guess you know like the edges of the of the of the foul side. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And he, I think he messed up his oblique right there a little bit. He was out for like a, a week or so, but I remember they kept rolling him out there while he was day to day. They would roll him out there to get in that bat or two. Mm-hmm. And then he officially went on the DL for a little bit. And I don't know. I mean, he's just not, he hasn't, he started off the season hitting a couple home runs, but he really never, he hasn't been Chris Davis at all this year. And I mean, He's still Chris Davis in the sense that he'll strike out enough times, but he hasn't been the Chris Davis that, you know, like the home run hitter that we that we've known. And so I'm on his baseball savant uh, page right now, the, his stat cast numbers, and it looked like he did have a left hip oblique contusion. So oblique issues, I feel like, is are like the flavor of the month this year. Like everybody's everybody's dealing with everybody. Every, like there's a lot of players dealing with oblique issues, but either way, um, Looking at his stat cast numbers, his exit velocity is, is down. It's the lowest it's ever been. Um, and he's not in the red in any category stat cast wise. So his his launch angle's down, his exit velocity's down, all of his numbers across the board are down. Um so maybe, and I'm thinking Aaron Judge here. Aaron Judge, if you delve deeper into the numbers, he's having a decent season, but it's not an Aaron Judge type season. I wonder if if the oblique has something to do with it. And I'm not talking about judge. I'm using judge as an example. I, I wonder if the oblique has something to do with Chris Davis's 
you know, performance because it's a juice ball. It, we have the juice balls this year. He hit 48 home runs last year, so you would expect that he would hit that or more. Like everybody under the sun is hitting is having career high numbers in home runs, except yeah. for Chris Davis and Aaron Judge. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And it's just you know, like I feel like yeah, you you can have an oblique injury, and I agree that's 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 a good enough reason to understand why your power numbers are down. But can you adjust? Like, if you can't hit home runs anymore, can you at least make more contact? Since you yeah. can't hit home runs anymore, like, stop striking out, adjust. You know, I'm pretty sure they play the shift on him because he, I doubt that he he he's that you know he's that much of a contact hitter. He could spray it all over the field, which he can home run wise. Mm-hmm. I just don't know, re, you know, just regular hitting, just a good old single, probably not. So, hmm. That's I don't too buy bad. it. That's too you bad, man. You don't have man. to suck this bad. You don't have to suck this bad, and if you and if you do suck this bad because of an injury, then you shouldn't be on the field. Word. You should be resting, son. Um, he does get shifted a shitload. Um, non. Aaron Judge, like... Aaron Judge, and Chris Davis are like they're they're similar because even though Judge oh, might have an injury, whoa, 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 shouldn't Judge at least have twenty home runs by now? At whoa. least. Slow down. Judge is I'm having. Just saying. A... I guarantee you that Chris Davis is. I'm going to use weighted runs created blah, blah blah weighted runs created plus with Chris Davis. I guarantee you his is below 100. His is below average. I'm just strict, strictly speaking on the it, fact that Aaron Judge his is 70 300 played way below average. I'm just simply stating that in 300 plate appearance plate appearances, Aaron Judge has 12 home runs. Yeah, but that's, his, his, that's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal. You're right. But his exit velocity is the highest of his career, surprisingly. So he's still hitting the ball hard. And his babip, because he hits the ball so hard, it, it, it breaks shifts and it lands for hits. So he's not hitting for power like he has in the past. That's true. I agree 100% on that. But he's getting on base at a good clip. He's creating opportunities to score runs. He's He's doing it in other ways. He's doing what... You're saying Chris Davis should do. If you can't hit home runs, you should be doing other things. You know what I mean? Like he's slapping singles up the middle, going oppo. He's, you know what I mean? He's doing everything his, else. But but if his exit velocity, which I'm looking at right now, it is the highest it's ever been. It's the highest he's averaged. You question? You career. question my judgment on Aaron Judge? No, 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 no. I'm I'm just saying like if his exit velocity is higher than it's than it's been in previous years, then why isn't he hitting home runs? Because you know what is it? Can it really be an oblique injury if he's actually barreling the ball better than he's ever had than he ever has? Yeah, he's barreling the ball better than he has since 2017. But like I, I had done some research on this a couple of weeks ago, and I don't know. I don't think he's hit home runs in, in two weeks, so it's probably the same thing. Every single one of his home runs are center or opposite field. So to me, that's telling me that he's he's not getting in front of the ball to pull it to his pull side on the right or even to right center. He used to plop it right into those bleachers way back there um and his his launch angles down so his his swing is more leveled so like i keep saying he's slapping it looks like he's slapping a lot of singles a lot of doubles you know up the center against the shift he's not hitting it up it's not going up in the air i wonder if his ground ball rate is is up this year that'd be something to that'd be an interesting thing to look up for me at least Anyways, probably just lost like all of our listeners. No, his ground ball rate is <laughs> his ground ball rate is not up. How about his how about his uh, line drive rate? Let's see. I don't know how to look at half of these numbers, man. It's just so much. Yo, his pop ups. Buzz. He's not popping up. So uh, that's that's odd for me. That's weird. His his. Well, yeah, his pop ups are down. T- it's two point three percent. His line drive rate is twenty nine point eight. His line drive percentage <laughs> is way higher. It's the highest it's ever been. So he's not hitting it up. He's mm. his fly ball rate is down. His line drive rate is up. His ground ball rate is up, and his his uh, pop up rate is way down. So that's telling me that he's not elevating the ball. He's just he, his his swing is leveled off, and he's you know hitting more grounders. Okay, well, man, what, whatever, man. I I take I'll take the L on this one because <laughs> I drafted him second with the second <laughs> with my second pick in the draft. I'll fuck it. Like it's I a got bad fan. He's a bad fantasy player this year. That I'll yeah, give you. And- I'll I'll probably never draft him again, honestly, unless he's sitting there. Okay, I'll take him. Yeah, go ahead, man. I mean, do what you can, but I've been so disappointed this year with Aaron Judge and Chris Davis. Votto didn't never bounce back like I thought he would. Yeah, man. I can't wait for Votto to come off the IL. I'm going to pick him up. 
He'll be mine. Because <laughs> Jock Peterson sucks. I need a first baseman right now. All right. You see what I see. You see what I see in Votto. I love Votto. I used to see. Me too. I love him. Um, all right, listeners. Today we're going to talk about a whole bunch of shit. So we're going to start with some baseball stuff. Then we're going to get into the NFL. What the fuck is uh, Odell Beckham Jr. thinking about in the Antonio Brown situation? We're going to hit some NBA talk. And then we have some TV and film um, things we want to talk about. I've debated separating the TV and film episode into a separate episode. I'm not sure if I want to do that yet because this looks like it's going to be a super long one. Maybe not. Who knows? We'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) But with that, like I always say, if you're not interested in hearing baseball talk, look at the episode description. Skip ahead to the NFL talk or the NBA talk or the TV and film talk. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Just skip ahead. And like I said at the beginning of the show, please leave a five-star rating. Thank you. Let's start with the home run race, CT. Yes. So Mike Trout hit his 42nd home run today, and he's tied with, with uh, Cody Bellinger. They both have 42. Christian Yelich has 41, and Pete Alonso has 40. Who, who, who finishes the season with the most home runs? And do any of them crack 50? Trout's definitely going to hit 50 because there's like six weeks left in baseball. Mm-hmm. Um. Who's going to finish with the most? I think, hmm, I'm going to say Bellinger. Yeah. He has, his swing is just like made for home runs. I wouldn't say Trout's swing is made for home runs. He just knows how to hit the ball harder, I guess. I mean, yeah. I don't know the exit velocity averages of any of these guys. You probably do, man, because you're the stat guy, and you're always on top of that stuff, and you probably have it hand and ready right, <laughs> th- right now I to don't. read it back to me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure Trout knows how to barrel up the ball better than those guys, but I think Bellinger has the more home run type of swing. So I think Bellinger might end up with more. Um, I see Alonzo kind of flat. And I, I don't know if Alonzo can get to 50, you know? So you don't think he breaks Aaron Judge's rookie home run record? Mm, I, I don't know, man. Pro- okay. Probably not. I'm going to say no. So what, what is it, 52? 52, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say he doesn't break it. I'm going to say Yelich gets to 50, Bellinger gets to 50, and Trout also gets to 50. And I think Bellinger ends up with more home runs than all of them. Are we – so I feel like I don't hear Bellich's, Bellich, Yelich's name so much anymore. Like, has he slowed down recently, or is it just that it's Yelich fatigue at this point? We're, we're paying attention to other people. I think he was – on the IL for a week or something, okay. right? Wasn't he? Because uh, uh, I, yes. I know what you mean. I, did, I didn't hear about him either, and then I don't know where I hear he, he hits two home runs in this epic game to that was like an extra innings or something to tie the league lead at the time. Mm. Over the weekend was like 40, 41. So, yeah, you're right. I haven't heard. I didn't hear about him for a while. But then again, like that whole Bellinger Yelich thing kind of died out altogether even yeah. though you still hear about bellinger you didn't hear about them like together and i think it was because yelich was injured for a little bit yelich did spend 10 days on the il and guess what his injury was oblique oblique what like seriously like i feel like last year i didn't hear oblique so much you hear you heard a lot of hamstrings shit like that i feel like i'm hearing oblique all over the place this year um yeah. he's still having a monster season though my god no yeah i know it's crazy what's not fair man I mean, who do you think is going to end up with the most home runs? He should be a Yankee. I think... Uh, oh, stop. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> I think I think Mike Trout is just... He t- like, he's unbelievable, man. I, I just wish that he didn't sign that extension with the Angels because I just don't see this team going anywhere anytime soon. Um, but, Trout? yeah, um, he's unbelievable, no. man. I think he's... I'm ready to declare him the greatest player of all time because he doesn't look like he's going to slow down anytime soon. It's going to take like a broken fucking leg or some shit and take him out for the whole year for this guy to slow down. He just gets better and better and better and better. And all of a sudden, he's cr- he, he has 41 home runs with six weeks left. I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to hit 50, and I think he gets the MVP. They've, they've robbed him of the MVP award over the last two years. You can argue that Mookie deserved it more than, than Trout. I'm not going to deny that. You could make an argument for Trout, though. But they don't want to give it to Trout because it's like a foregone conclusion. But if he earned it, give it to him. And I think this year, if he doesn't get the MVP award, then he should fucking, you know, start some shit. Yeah, back to the Angels not going anywhere. I, who knows if Otani could be the difference? I mean, that's 
that's an extra pitcher in the rotation. He's he's we think he's going to be elite compared to what he did his rookie season. So I don't know, man. You never know. I one don't pitcher know. could be the, one pitcher could be the di- the difference. And I know they're far away. I'm not saying they're a World Series contending with with Otani, but they could they could probably be playoff contending. You know. And when Otani's in the on the field, you're right. When he's on the field, they win more games than when he's not on the field. So he's the difference maker on that team. Not saying that 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 Trout isn't, but one player can't, you know, in baseball especially can't redefine a team. But put Trout and Otani together, and this team is that much better. But I still think they need more pieces. I just feel like they're missing too much all around. Like Andrelton Simmons is good. Um, Trout is good, obviously, and Otani. But after that, who else do they have? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, by the way, speaking of home runs, I don't know how to say his first name. Aristides Aqu- Aquino. Fastest guy to 10 home runs. 11. Fastest guy to 11 home runs. No, well, he, he first was the fastest guy to 10 home runs. Ah, my bad. Then he hit 11 home runs, and he's also the fastest guy to 11 home runs. So I could imagine if he hits 12 home runs today or he hits his 12th, he'll be the fastest guy to 12. I don't know. But where are these guys coming from? Because now it seems like there's there's enough talent to go around in Major League Baseball with young guys that are just jacking home runs, you know? The, well, so first off, the balls are absolutely juiced. Don't tell me. <laughs> nobody can tell me otherwise. <laughs> like this is fucking nuts. You're right. Fucking your, your Don Alvarez. Now this guy. Like every when Austin Riley first came up, he was hitting homers. Um, it's insane, man. The amount of home runs and a lot of people have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. I, I got. I'm gonna be honest. I really don't have a problem with it. I think it makes the game more entertaining. The next step is let these guys fucking flaunt and let them talk shit and let them you know pimp their home runs and shit more like exaggerated get more people to enjoy this game i don't care if goose gossage doesn't watch the game anymore fuck him he's from the you know 60s oh. and 70s <laughs> fuck that guy seriously damn uh you know what i always wanted to i always wanted there be i always wanted there to be two sides to the juiced balls argument like is it really juiced balls or is it really that guys are just trying to hit home runs more home runs which i think mm-hmm. it's it's a little bit of both i think it's a, but yeah. you can't but you can't deny that when they switched the balls in the uh, in the Atlantic League, I think it was, or I don't know what minor league. Yeah, it was system, in the Atlantic they League. They put yeah. it in. Yeah, and it doubled or tripled their their production. So the balls are definitely altered, and I'm okay with it. But I just don't want to hear like I don't want to hear anything of like today's athletes do this and that. Like you know, if the balls are juiced, then can we just accept that everyone is playing on juiced balls and can we just take the numbers for what it is you know i don't want to hear i don't want the comparison and back when you said uh you know you're ready to dub trout the greatest of all time i'm cool with that but i don't think that's i don't think i could ever just give that to one person i mean the the game's been around for a hundred something years like you know I, i always think like if you're the best player for more than a decade that's your you dominated that era. Like you're the greatest of all time. You you should be. You should have the claim to greatest of all time because you you're doing something that no one else is. He doesn't have an equal in the league right now. Unless Yelich does this for four more seasons, he really doesn't have like another equal in nope. the league. You know, no one's even close. I, I've always said Mookie is Mike Trout B, but even Mookie, there's a big gap between Mookie Betts and and Mike Trout. Like even in Mookie Betts' down year this year, he's having a phenomenal season. He like, is. Like that's that's the kind of player that that Mookie Betts and Mike Trout is. But think about Mookie Betts and multiply him by ten, and that's Mike Trout. That's how that's the separation between the best player in baseball and the next best best player in baseball. And I don't think you could say that about any other player in any sport. Um, even LeBron James in his prime wasn't ten times better than Kevin Durant. Let's say you know what I'm saying. Um, Ooh, I do don't think? know, man. I think that. I definitely think you you have we've been able to compare Kevin Durant to LeBron for for more than like five years now, even yeah. longer. So you're right. Yeah, I guess I guess we can say that about LeBron, but that doesn't mean that LeBron isn't the tr- like he's definitely Mike Trout of basketball. In a, in a way, he might be even better. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's a tough comparison. Yeah, well, he, he you know? but, but the thing is that is that in basketball, one player can change a franchise like he was taking a shitty cavaliers team before he went to the heat to the finals year in and year out and that team had nobody like 
I don't think I can name a single person from that original, you know, Cavaliers team when he started out. No, I know what you're saying. I, I, I think what, what I'm saying is even though there's a Kevin Durant and a Kawhi Leonard in the NBA, which are rivaling LeBron currently, even though he's almost at the end of his career, but even then, D- Durant's been around and he's been compared. He's always been the second to LeBron and it's been comparable. Some people even choose Durant. Nobody's going to choose somebody, you know, there's not going to be someone choosing Mookie over Trout. At least I don't think there should be. But I still don't know who I would give like the, you know, better athlete in their respective sports between the two of them. This guy, I mean, I don't know. This guy is on, he's on another planet, man. No, definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. And and I I guess it's rare for a guy to be like this in baseball. Like we we, like we went from Jordan to Kobe to then LeBron. Mm-hmm. I don't know who was. I guess Pujols, but Pujols been dropped off. Yeah, he he, he fell off a while ago. <laughs> yeah, right. So I don't know, man. And even Pujols, who had like we said, probably the best ten years of any baseball player, maybe in history. Mike Trout is approaching that. Give him one more year at this production, and he's way better than Pujols, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's not well, hitting three fifty and striking out way less or whatever, but he's. His fucking statute is all black. It's insane on baseball reference. Better hitter, that's debatable, right? With Pools, I think better overall, I guess, yeah, Trout playing center field this whole time. and Mm -hmm. He hasn't won a gold glove yet. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, I mean, we all know he's gold glove caliber, but but he's definitely not even the top five best center fielding center fielders in baseball since he's been around, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all we right. love Trout. I love Trout, man. I just, why didn't he just, you know, come to get the, the free, Yankees? I'm hit just the market. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. He would have, I think he would have gotten way more money at this point for a guy like him. Holy shit. Although he's the richest player, in, you know, in the history of American sports. We can't complain. Um, Who knows? Who knows what the free agency would have been like with Mike Trout? I would have expected the same type of deal, though. You, yeah. The Angels. Yeah. I mean, they did, they did the right thing in retaining him. They would have been stupid to let him go, but I, I don't know. I just don't see them going anywhere anytime soon. There's too many There's too many teams ahead of them. Like, the, the A's are always going to be competitive. The Astros are set for, you know, another five years. Um, Texas, all right, whatever. Seattle, they're, they're starting to make some moves for the future. But I, don't, I feel like I don't hear that about the Angels as much. Yeah. So I don't know. And um, spe- another superstar in baseball who maybe isn't on Mike Trout's level, but in terms of popularity, he's probably the most popular player in baseball. Bryce Harper is having a sick August. Um, right when My the guy. team needed him most, he's stepping up to the plate. Uh, so this is, these are his numbers in August. I just pulled it out. Wow, that's not that bad. Um, <laughs> he has eight home runs. 18 RBIs. He's hitting three, 266 with a 382 on base, 641 slugging. That comes out to a 1022 uh, OPS. And he had that monster walk off home run a couple weeks ago. He's had two multi home run games already this month. And yeah, man, he's making Philly believe in Philly again. You know what? Give credit to Charlie Manuel. Mm hmm. And. Mets give credit to Phil Regan. They went old school, and things things are looking up for both teams. Uh oh. But yeah, man, that Bryce Harper home run, the walk off the other day, was oh so God. epic. I, I think I watch it every day. So and- far since it's <laughs> since it's happened, I think I've watched it every day. I've, today I watched a new angle of him throwing the bat mm-hmm. once he hit it. <sighs> and that and that freaking home run trot, epic. Yeah. It really can't was like <laughs> it really was, man. I could like I can see that being replayed for years to come. And regardless of what the what Philly ends up doing this season, which I think they're going to edge out the Mets for that wild card spot. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm on board, man. I've, I've always been the Har- a Harper guy. So yeah. and people have been down on Harper this season. Um, but the facts are with two outs and runners in scoring position, his clutch stats, this, this is his stat line. He has a 400 batting average, 529 on base, 725 slugging. He's hit two home runs in those situations and has 25 
RBI. So all season, all season. Jesus, that's in, man. That's that's in forty three games, fifty one plate appearances. So his numbers go up in, in pressure situations, and and in Philly, that's going to go really well. If they if they can sneak into a postseason uh, position right now, they're let me see, they're two games back Ooh. as of today. They're tied with the Mets. Holy shit, man! Gabe Kapler has to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. How could you not win with this team? They have a minus 18 run differential. I'm surprised. I mean, not every team. I'm just excluding the Yankees because I don't think we'll ever see it again with that many injuries. But Andrew McCutcheon was a big part of that lineup. That was when yeah, he, he was. when he was in there. They were, I think, they were in first place, or at least yeah. But you added in and, the realm and, of first and Dave place. Dave Robertson too. Um, yeah. They're within two games. They could still make the postseason. Um, yep. But, you know, they still have Gene Segura. Jay Bruce got hurt. That's true. Um, I wonder what Carlos Santana would have done on that team. Real quick, man. Besides Aaron Nola, who's pitching on that team? Yeah, man. That's a good question. Because, like, <laughs> I only pay attention to Philly games when Aaron Nola's pitching because I have him on my fantasy team. But I can't. I don't know who's the, who's the second pitcher on that rotation. Yeah, Arietta's down. Ah, I forgot about Arietta. Well, he's well, down. He's down. He's, gone he's down. Um, yeah. They have Aaron Nola, Arietta, Eflin, Eflin, Eflin. Oh God, that guy's hit or miss. Vince Velasquez, Nick Pavetta. I, I didn't even know Vince Velasquez was still in the rotation. He probably is now because of Arietta, but I, I thought he was out of the bullpen. And Jared Eikhoff is on the sixty-day IL. Wow. Wait, is that his? Yeah, he's a starter. Um, who also started games for them? Jose Alvarez has started games for them. Colt Irving, That's Drew the thing, Smiley. See, I, yeah, they don't have I starters. Going into this, going into the season, I remember we said Philly was looking like a hot team, but they really never they didn't do anything for their pitching. No, you know? they, um, add, they added Robertson, and that's it. That's pretty much it. That's all they did. But they but they yeah, added they, in their in their offense. They added Gene Segura. They added McCutcheon, who's who's out. That's true. Real Muto. Um, he's been good. He's been good this season. Yeah, Riomuto's been really good. But then they've had people who haven't been doing so great. Odubo Herrera hasn't been so good. Uh, Reese Hoskins hasn't been so good. They're underperforming. Cesar Hernandez, you know, he's he, usually he's good for a good on base. He doesn't even have a good on base this year. Yeah, uh, Mikhail Franco was just called up again. Like, oh wow, yep. Yeah, I think I don't. Th- I think at the beginning of the year we, we didn't have Philly. I don't know if we had Philly winning the division. I can't remember because of pitch, because of pitching. I know we addressed their not, them not having any pitching, as opposed to like the Nationals who have good pitching. Yeah, but I remember. I remember we did say the Nationals were gonna were gonna crash and burn this year, and they're 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 uh, competitive, man. Like. I can see them winning games in the playoffs, which I'm surprised that we had we had we were so down on them because they do have a good roster. And Juan Soto, I think, at the end of the day, I think he's going to turn out to be better than Bryce Harper. Um, uh, yeah, maybe. And Max Scherzer's been hurt; he's coming back on Thursday, so they're within five games of the division. The Atlanta Braves, I think their bullpen sucks. Um, am I right on that? I think I'm right on that because they they just keep looking well, for. I'll bullpen tell you that arms. Shane. I'll tell you when they got when they acquired Shane Green, he came back down to earth. He's no longer yeah. having that dominant season, but he's been good as of late. Yeah, but they ruined they ruined Shane Green for me, man. And they they traded they well they didn't trade they got rid of Gausman. I was surprised by that. I didn't even hear about it. I just one day he was on my team. One day I see that he's in Cincinnati. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Um, <laughs> I think he's a de- a decent pitcher. Like he has good movement on his pitches. I just think he needs he needs to be in the right situation. Speaking of pitching. Sonny Gray. Have you been following Sonny Gray? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Holy shit, man. He has like the lowest opponent batting average in baseball or some shit. He he went like 20 innings without allowing a run. He's He has a, two, a sub three ERA this year. I know oh his God. Woba is good. I saw that the other day. Jesus. His Christ. Woba or his exit velocity average or something. I don't know, man. Against but speaking him. about speaking of pitching, the Yankees acquired Trevor Rosenthal. Yeah, random. Super that random. was random. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Random. Um, all right. What else we got on the baseball side? Oh, we got more. Uh, oh, worst moves. You want to go over some worst worst moves? Yes. All right. So I was looking on Bleacher Report today, and they had a piece out about 
the worst moves that teams have made this season. Um, let's start with the AL East. Uh, Baltimore or- Orioles trading Mike Yastrzemski away um, is what they had. What do you think in about March, that? In March. They traded yeah. him away in March. Yeah. But, I mean, did this list come out yesterday or something? Because are they only saying this because he hit three home runs in one game the other day? This was published today, August 20th. Hmm. Could the Orioles have anticipated the 874 OPS and 16 homers? Carl Yastrzemski's grandson has put up in 72 games. Would, Probably would it, not. Would it have mattered for the Orioles? I guess what they're saying is, is that he's young and controllable. Mm-hmm. that they probably could have traded him later in the season, okay. I guess, and gotten a yeah. better haul, haul. I don't know. I guess they're not – I don't know if they're saying that the trade was overall not, you know, one of the worst moves – was was one of the worst moves, or was it that what they got in return is what made it a worst move? Right, 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 right. I don't know. Gotcha. What did they get? But they still probably should have – Read more into the 801 OPS he posted in 94 games in AAA Norfolk last year. Yeah, he has a good slugging this year. He doesn't have his his on base isn't so hot, but I guess you know San Francisco's a pretty big ballpark. I guess so, I'm pretty stupid. He's 28 years old though. It's not like he's yeah, a, you know a young kid. Yeah. Uh, the Orioles got Tyler Herb. I don't know who that what is. Fuck is that? <laughs> Let's see, Herb, 27 next month. This was in March. Herb is so he's 27 now. Began his professional career with Seattle before being sent south as the player to be named later in the Chris Heston deal. All right, this is getting deep. These these sounds like nobodies. <laughs> yeah, well, all right. Fuck the Orioles. How about the Red Sox leaving the <laughs> leaving their bullpen alone? I think that this is the biggest fail of any team in baseball this season is the Red Sox not addressing their bullpen situation if, if anything making it worse by not bringing back those two arms again but what were we, what were we supposed to do with basically no money to spend and no assets to trade away well you did spend money you you spent money on uh, on, on Pierce and you spent okay. money on Eovaldi well I thought this was talking about the worst moves Oh, this is all 2019. I thought this was like, you know, as of recent memory. No, no, no. This is like the worst thing this team could have done entering this season. Oh, yeah. All right. Because you got, you got, you got us there. And not just that. Like, I'm sure that if you go on fan graphs and you sort the stats that the Red Sox bullpen isn't going to be ranked the worst in baseball. But I, I read somewhere. I can't remember. This was pretty recently, like last week, that they have like the worst conversion rate. That they take leads late into games, but they blow them. They have the, the most blow. The, I guess it's the most blown saves of any team in baseball. And yeah, I mean, article. if we're being honest with ourselves, if that's the case, and somebody in our chat said that it was something like 23 blown saves or something this season, that's the difference in the division right there. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if, if retain those leads, maybe blow five of them instead of 23 or blow 10 of them. You're within striking distance of the Yankees. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And yeah, you're right. We're tied with the worst MLB, you know, conversion rate, fifty one percent. That's insane, man. That's a that's yeah. that's horrible. Um and then just as horrible, although it's not hurting the Yankees as much yet, is them not addressing their starting pitching. Going after um J Hap instead of Patrick Corbin, not going after Dallas Keuchel for apparently a couple of million dollars. Um I hope this doesn't come and bite the Yankees in the ass in October. Uh, I hope that the Yankees continue to score runs, but their rotation scares the shit out of me. Like, Sabathia should probably consider ending it now instead of continuing. James Paxton has been pitching better of late, but he can't seem to, like, he can't get out of the first inning without allowing a run. It makes no sense. And um, Tanaka's been better of late. Herman has been good. Um, but we need more than that. Yeah, and uh, any updates with Severino? Like, Yes. He threw a, f- a couple of bullpen sessions, and he's feeling really good. So they're thinking that he'll be back end of August, early September. But I'm, first, I'm hearing so, bullpen, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing, oh, Car- Carlos Carrasco is also, he's coming back, I think, today. 
uh, but through the bullpen. They're going to oh. start him out as, at the bullpen. So that's crazy, man. Wow, that's amazing. Congrats, congrats to Carrasco. Word. Word up. Yerp. Yerp. Fuck that. Fuck the Jays. Fuck the Rays. I don't want to talk about them. Um, the White Sox <laughs> keeping Jose Abreu. Should they have traded Jose Abreu? Yeah. I think so, too. They're, they're still like a year or two from being set with their young guys and all that stuff. Actually, it might might be next year. You never know. Yeah. But yeah, Jose Abreu, man. He would have been a big a big get for somebody. Yeah, definitely. He's a um okay. The Indians. So earlier before the season started, there was rumors that the Indians were shopping Corey Kluber and Trevor Bauer. At the trade deadline, they traded away Trevor Bauer to the Cincinnati Reds in a trade that I still don't understand, but whatever. Um, but they kept Corey Kluber. Should they have gotten rid of Corey Kluber? I say yes. Well, I mean, yeah, I I would I would say yes too because clearly they're competitive without him and Bauer. Mm-hmm. But is he like on his contract year or something? Um, that's a great question, CT. Because I'm wondering if they didn't want to trade him injured, knowing that the deal that they would get would have been far less of what they could have gotten if if he just if he was healthy he's under contract so he has a team option so the team can can retain him for 17 million five five hundred thousand which is cheap for a pitcher like Corey kluber when he's healthy or they can let him walk um and then he has another team option in 2021 so i don't it's, it sounds to me like they're probably just gonna let him walk you think i mean they can just pick up that option and trade him then yeah that's true that's true. He'll, Kluber, uh, yeah. on the, Kluber on the cheap. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember when they were shopping him around, I was hoping the Yankees had gotten him. And I, thank God they didn't because this would have been a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> thank the good Lord. Um, the the Tigers, this is, a, this is one that I didn't understand. They were shopping Matthew Boyd prior to the All-Star break, and they never traded him. I wonder why. And now he's kind of yeah. falling off. He yeah. slipped. Now there's nothing attractive about. I mean, he still strikes out a lot of hitters, but he's not as he's not as good. He, he's been killing me. He's on my fantasy team. And he's been killing me lately. The Astros will fix him. Oh my god, yeah, fucking a man. What like what are they doing down there? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yo, it's crazy. Uh, the Royals keeping Whit Merrifield. Eh, eh. I don't really know about that one. Me neither. Minnesota Twins not adding better pitching. Eh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> was there really that much good pitching out there that yeah, everybody's like you know uh houston like this is nitpicking houston nationals not calling up jordan alvarez sooner i'm not even gonna touch that that's just stupid yeah uh angels keeping cole calhoun i didn't even know that he was like on the block cole calhoun reminds me of brett gardner like that they're like lifers on their team yeah kind of you know they played they played the position well they always run out balls that they put in play but i don't know man <laughs> and you have your your guy mishandling chris davis um the oakland athletics arguably should have installed liam hendricks as their closer sooner than june 22nd but the bigger mystery of the 2019 season involves the status of chris davis um davis let me see he did a stint on the il with a hip and oblique injury he struggled i know that obviously the A's haven't gained anything by allowing Davis to play through the pain. Without his usual power, after all, he's worse than a replacement level player. Truth. So I guess he's still hurt, but they're they're not putting him on the IL. Yeah, it looks like he said that the, a sore right hand is doing more damage to his power. But again, like take t- like then take put yourself him, out of the game. Then yeah, then put him on the IL. Let him rest. Seriously, because I, do- I I seriously doubt that a team like the A's would let Chris Davis just go out there and half ass it with the, yeah. with an injury. Yeah. They squeeze everything they can. I mean, they I mean, they're not going to just like waste this guy's season or their season for that matter. Right. Some bullshit, man. I'm and they you. they need him to perform cuz they they're in playoff contention and they they're going to need his bat in the postseason. Yeah. Uh, Matt Chapman's been really good this year, but Chris Davis is a home run threat every time he goes <laughs> up to the to the plate. The Rangers keeping Hunter Pence. I think that was a big mistake too. Cuz you took yeah, this he's on, the, he's on you, that one year, right? Yeah, and you took this this fucking toy that nobody believed in. He was like a walk-on, you know, uh 
tryout or whatever the fuck, and they gave him a chance, and he's having a phenomenal year. Why wouldn't you trade this away? Well, because I think I don't know how they were at the trade deadline, but there was a point where Texas was in the run for that wild card. Yeah. So they, they also have Lance, Lance Lynn and Mike Miner. They didn't move them either. Um, and Lance oh. Lynn is having like a resurgent year. That fuck. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, the Braves not signing Keiko sooner. That's stupid. Uh, Miami Marlins don't care. New York Mets sticking with Edwin Diaz. Should I don't the think Mets, that's, should the Mets have traded Diaz? I don't think that's stupid. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, he's still what, like 24, yeah, 25. Young. Um, if they trade him away and get like if they trade him away at his face value of what that would have been at that point where he was just giving up runs in every appearances, they they'd get nothing back for him. So essentially, you just you're staying with Cano. Mm -hmm. Like that's gonna look at that's gonna look bad. So I don't think that was a bad move keeping him. I don't think so either, and I, I don't think that I, I think that there's something has has to be going on for his performance to have gotten so much worse. I never believed in Diaz last year. You can listen to the podcast from last year when I said that I thought that he was overrated, but I don't think I also don't think that he's a five three two ERA type pitcher. I think he's better yeah. than this. Yeah. Um, and he's still striking out a lot of batters. Yeah. But you're right. Uh, all right. The Phillies mis mishandling of Jake Arrieta. Don't give a shit. Um, Washington Nationals <laughs> neglecting their bullpen. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't fix their bullpen. Um, but like you said, who was available? Seriously. Craig Kimbrell hasn't been doing it for the Cubs. I mean, okay. Uh, <laughs> Cubs neglecting their bullpen. Again, who was available? Cincinnati Reds not calling up Aristides Aquino sooner. Stupid. Whoever yeah, because who, who really knew? I mean, let's exactly. see. The Cincinnati Reds have a 21 plus, <laughs> plus 21 run differential uh, because they simply haven't kept up with their pitching. Things might look different had the, had they called up had he called them up sooner. All he's done in 18 games, yeah, hindsight, obviously. Exactly. All he's done in 18 games is post a one two seven one OPS and 11 home runs. Uh. <laughs> The Pirates keeping Felipe Vasquez. I agree with this. Why didn't they trade him? Remember when Felipe Vasquez was Felipe? What was man? What name? was it? I remember when he changed it too. Yeah, I was so confused by that. Milwaukee Brewers not trusting K Keiston Hira sooner. That's so stupid because the Brewers are a playoff team. Like they don't have time to experiment with these guys. Yeah, you know? like. <laughs> Right. Uh, but anyways, uh, Felipe uh, Vasquez. What was it? Felipe. We'll never know, man. I mean, we could it'll, it. it'll come to me. Uh, the Cardinals leaving their lineup alone. Stupid. Uh, the Diamondbacks. Oh, man, this is, there's a lot of baseball teams. Yeah. Keeping Robbie Ray. They should have traded Robbie Ray. The Yankees were interested in Robbie Ray. I was surprised they didn't get him. Yeah. I wish they would have gotten him. Me too. Um, the Rockies trading Mike Talkman. Again, I don't like these hindsight is 2020 who the fuck was mike talkman before this season exactly Nobody knew so chill um the dodgers neglecting their bullpen the padres keeping kirby yates that's that's true they were they were shopping kirby yates around i wonder why they didn't trade him maybe they felt like they were still in, content, in contention yeah i think at some at some points all these teams were not that they were like des like headed to the wild card, but they were in the striking distance. Mm -hmm. I know Texas was. Okay, and then we're down to our last team, the Giants keeping Madison Bumgarner and Will Smith. But the so right now the Giants are three and a half games back of the wild card. Um, they're still. In I it, guess. Yeah. I guess I kind of understand what the team what. This article means in, in a sense that, like, you should never hope that, like, if your team isn't in, in in the run to win the division, you should pretty much consider your team, like, out of it. Even if you are almost, in, you know, within striking distance of the wild card, because no team, you know, their goal isn't to go through the wild card. Right. That's not that. And even if you do go through the wild card, it's a one game elimination. So in that sense, they're never they were never in the run to win the division because the Dodgers just ran away with it. Yeah. So I get it. But I don't know, man. Maybe the deal wasn't sweet enough. Yeah. With the, the Giants. They're not they're not like this, like inept 
uh organization that'll just like they'll yeah give me give me like your give me two guys i never heard of right. and i'll give you madison bumgarner like right 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 and and the giants have that guy farhan Saidi or whatever who's supposed to be like a genius executive and he i he knows what he's doing yeah All right, let's move on to the NFL. We did a lot of baseball. That was almost an hour of baseball. Um, <laughs> God damn. Um, all right, so the main thing I wanted to talk about in football, and we don't have to spend too much time in this, is Odell Beckham Jr. saying that the Giants sent him to Cleveland to die. They sent him here to die. He said, they'd send me here to die with the Browns trade. What the fuck is he talking about? Like, he's in a better situation now in Cleveland than he would have been with the Giants. He should be thanking the Giants for the trade. He's 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 in a better wide receiving tandem with with whoever the fuck else is, is on that team. That was his, his college teammate or whatever. Best friend, his best friend. His best friend. And he's you know, he's with who Max Kellerman the other day said could potentially be the best quarterback in football. In uh in, I can't even remember. I, I'm I'm Baker I'm, Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, there you go. So um so here's my here's my thing. Like I I think Baker's definitely better than Eli Manning is going into next year because Eli Manning is like a dinosaur at this point. Mm-hmm. So sorry, man, if that if that gets you upset. I don't even care anymore, man. Well, Father Time loses to no one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like it's I I personally don't think it's like he's he's in a situation right. What I think upsets him, why I think he keeps bringing bringing the New York up, is because. He, being being a professional athlete in new york is like that's like being a king you know like you're you're the man you're in the city you're in new york city it's like playing for la except that i guess playing for the giants is more is better than playing for for the chargers i don't know if the chargers are still considered like a laughing stock of the nfl the browns even though but no no i'm saying like versus playing in la in New oh, York. i got you okay you know what would be better for an nfl player i know what the i know what the answer is for an nba player but you know what's better for an nfl player to play in a new york side of the of the coast or in the new york new york side of the country or in la i don't know but yeah but, in the but cleveland- isn't this kind of like a backhanded insult then to cleveland like oh you sent me here to die i don't want to be here that's kind of what it seems like to me like I, i'm just saying yeah like i honestly think that he's I don't know, like what what does he want? I mean, he gets to play with his guy, his mm-hmm. his best friend. Um, he's in a young team, and on the bright side, in his case, he gets to play for a team where basically he's he's gonna be like Aaron Rodgers to that team, where Aaron Rodgers dictates everything about Green Bay Packers. You were never gonna be that on the Giants because no. you're never gonna be bigger than a New York than the New York Giants. They right. they're ran differently than other teams. They're right. like. They're not the Yankees, but they run their organization kind of like the Yankees. You know, they don't really say crazy shit. They don't they stay out of the media for the most part. Mm-hmm. So he was never going to, like, take that team and be like, like, yeah, he could probably be the face of the team. But he was never going to be bigger than Eli Manning, probably on the Giants until they probably want to unless they win like a championship or, or whatever. But in, in Cleveland, he's definitely going to be like the man over there. He could I feel like he could pretty much do whatever he wants. And he can and probably the, Cle- the Cleveland Browns are a storied franchise that hasn't won a championship in a, have they ever won a championship? I don't even know. Um if he if he could manage to help this team get a Super Bowl, he'll be fucking remembered forever. You know what I mean? Whereas with New York, he's just going to be another piece to the puzzle, you know what I mean? Like Eli's he, Eli's never been bigger than than the Giants, even though he won two Super Bowl MVPs. It's always been a team effort. You know what I mean? Like the star never like I think this is what you're trying to say. The star in New York never exceeds his teammates. Like Alex Rodriguez came to New York City and he all of a sudden just became a member of the Yankees. He wasn't Alex Rodriguez anymore. You know what I mean? Exactly. He couldn't be bigger than the Yankees. Um in the in, yeah, in, Cle- in Cleveland, he's it's going to be Old Beckham, Baker Mayfield. There'll be a trophy. Mayfield, if know? they win a Super Bowl, there'll be an Old Beckham Jr. trophy outside of their stadium in like Two decades. As long as, as long as they become relevant and have like a winning season, or if they go to the playoffs or like an eight and eight record, whatever, you know. But you're, that's what I'm saying, though. Like he, to me, he, these athletes are just a bunch of babies. Like, first of all, before he got traded, he said that he didn't want to be in New York. I don't remember the quote exactly, but it was along the lines of like he wouldn't mind going somewhere else or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if he was trying to speed up the process of getting Eli out of out of there, mm-hmm. but. 
I don't know, man. Like, just first of all, stop doing GQ interviews <laughs> <laughs> to these athletes, man. You know. <laughs> so he's this is this, this was his exact quote, and then Ben Baskins of Sports Illustrated delved deeper into what Beckham told him. So he said, "This wasn't no business move. This was personal. They thought they'd send me here to die." And then Baskins wrote. Uh, that Beckham claims to know that the Giants received better offers and still chose to send him to Cleveland out of spite, hoping to stain his career with the enduring stigma that comes with playing for the Browns. So, like, <laughs> to me, if I'm the Browns or if I'm a Browns fan, I'm going to be like, fuck this guy. I mean, he's like, he's dissing my franchise. He's saying that the Giants, which, by the way, it doesn't make sense that they would do something like this. There's no way that that happened. But secondly, he's essentially saying that they wanted to ruin his career by sending him to a shitty ass franchise. He's calling the franchise that he plays for currently shitty, basically. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's how I'm reading basically. it. Basically. I just wish he would just like stop bringing up the Giants already, man. Yeah, just like, shut the fuck up already, man. Please just stop bringing him up already. <laughs> and then the Antonio Brown situation, I'm so confused about Antonio Brown like should should the fucking Raiders just say fuck you? Like are they really going to be that good this season? Should they just cut his ass? I mean, I guess they gave him they gave him guaranteed money, so they're gonna lose some money. But like, the GM came out I think yesterday and blasted him essentially because he doesn't want Gruden to have to do it. Today I'm seeing conflicting reports. I saw that he did go. Gruden said to ESPN that he did go to practice, but then I saw something else on Twitter. I wish I had it in front of me right now that he he was in practice, but as soon as they put on the helmets, that he walked out. So like. Can this guy just fucking grow the fuck up already? You had issues with Pittsburgh. You're in a new franchise now. You could, you know, you're the best wide receiver in football, but you're making yourself out to look like such a little bitch right now. Like, just play <laughs> the fucking game already. Yeah, man. And so you can't be like, no, I don't care. Usually they'll be like, yeah, you know, like they the media tries to make it seem worse than it is. But no matter what the media is doing in this case you got to know that what you're doing is like affecting the team and you guys aren't just any other team you're the raiders man like they gave gruden like a 10-year deal yeah to to get this team back to i guess i don't know when 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 what point in time the raiders were relevant before my time i guess but the raiders aren't just any old franchise man like you gotta you eventually you guys are gonna have to start winning games and he, people are gonna point the fingers at antonio brown a lot a lot of this you know, drama keeps spilling out. Um, you know, like Con unnecessary shit. shit conspiracy that has nothing to do conspiracy with Conspiracy theory time. Um is what, is what this is this just oh. <laughs> uh you know, is this just him trying to or like the Raiders like a plan a, a HBO thing to get ratings for hard knocks or something? Oh, that's a good one, man. I didn't even think about that. I mean, what else could it be? It doesn't make any sense. Nobody else I is complaining even... about the helmets. I really don't even think the Raiders know what they're doing, man, because they traded away Khalil Mack last year, but didn't they sign a player out of nowhere? Like, didn't they give like a offensive lineman like a bunch of money or something? I gotta look into this, man. I'm not. I'm still not in football mode because it's baseball season. <laughs> I'm not either. I just see these stories and I'm just like the Odell Beckham one caught me off guard today, but the Antonio Brown one I keep hearing it on the radio and keep seeing it on Bleacher Report and. I'm just like, all right, yeah. already, man. Like, Jesus, just first it's the fucking foot shit with the frostbite, and now it's the helmet. Like, dude, this just... Antonio Brown, <laughs> this Antonio Brown, OBJ, Baker Mayfield shit. It sounds like NBA drama, and the yeah. NFL does not need, you know, fabricated NBA drama. No, because that that to me is what the NBA is becoming. Like this whole Carmelo Anthony shit. We'll we we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's jump into the NBA. I don't know if you want to continue with that Carmelo Anthony thing because I don't nah, even know what's going on. Oh, okay. So no, it, the whole. I mean, you you pretty much know it. Carmelo. I guess Carmelo Anthony's been trying to get on a team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lately, and I guess no one's willing to take the risk on him. And I'm perfectly fine with the NBA turning their back on Carmelo Anthony. He's slow as shit. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He's not going to play defense. He's not going to want to come off the bench. Oh, I don't know that he is, but I'm assuming that he's not because if you're telling me there's not a team out there that'll take take Carmelo Anthony as a bench player, why wouldn't a team? I mean, he's he's still good enough to score coming off the bench, but I have a feeling that he's not willing to take a a, a bench role on any team. And then I hear the I see the other day uh I, what coach was it? Was it Greg Popovich? I'm not sure who it was. 
No, Greg Popovich was another thing. Uh, some coach was like, yeah, you know, Carmelo Anthony should de- – oh, this guy, Mark Cuban, mm. said that Carmelo Anthony should definitely be on the USA team for the Olympics. Mm. But – and I don't know if this is just me. I always thought that the like the USA team for the Olympics was always made up of like the best players around the league, but like in that Giannis role, like those new – that new breed of superstars. They're not – rookies right in a sense you know they're, they're not rookies or they're you could even make I, what do you consider a veteran like four years in the league yeah four or five years yeah i would say that i always thought that the men's usa team for the olympics was always you know i don't it was always made up of like those young veterans that are like superstars and i feel like carmelo anthony had his time already and he yeah. shouldn't he shouldn't be a part of that team so yeah. that's tough. what i'm talking about that's the nba drama i'm talking about like i don't give a fuck about carmelo anthony's you know, oh, like I can't find a team. Feel bad for me. no. I don't. I don't care about that stuff. Like I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and there was a time where Carmelo Anthony was good enough to carry a team, but that time is that time is long, long, long gone. Um, long, long. If he could just realize that and and take a B roll on some team, he could be he could be impactful. But I, you're right. I think his his ego is too big, um, and that's not yeah. going to happen. So. Fuck Carmelo. Um, Boogie Cousins tears an ACL again. And the Lakers are now trying to look for a big man. And they, they, they're they trying out uh, Joe King Noah and Dwight Howard. What do you think? Would any of them work on that team? Or is this a lost cause at this point? Uh, I'd be surprised if Hakeem Noah goes to the Lakers because... I just remember him ripping LeBron all those years on the Bulls. <laughs> do you remember that? I do. Yes, they hated yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. And Dwight Howard, man, like I don't know. I mean, for 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 the NBA that keeps what like twelve guys on the roster per team. Mm-hmm. Are you telling Are you telling me like the level of talent in the world is is that scarce that Hakeem <laughs> Noah and Dwight Howard are like your only two? <laughs> Your only two options. And, and that, the thing, the thing is, <laughs> is that Dwight Howard is so big that he could actually like he could he could work out, but he's Dwight Howard. Like he's just I don't know. There's just something, some black cloud just follows this guy around. Like his, yeah, it his, didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it didn't ahead. work out for him. It didn't work out for him the first time in in Los Angeles. Is it gonna work out now that he's Eesh. way past that that ability to play at a high level and? You know, after all those allegations came out recently. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's going to give you he's gonna give you 15 and 10. He's a double-double player, a walking double-double. Um, he's a big man. I don't know, though. I yeah, think. I don't know, man. It seems like it seems Hockey Noah and, and Dwight Howard will be adding a lot of slow slowness to that roster. Yeah, Noah, so, too, was, the game was, a, is, he was a bust at the Knicks, too, man. Oh, yeah, man. Big that was horrible. <laughs> terrible, man. Terrible. He was terrible with Memphis last year, too. Um, let's see. 5.7 rebounds, 7 points a game. That's horrible. He was playing 16 minutes a game. He's like nothing anymore. You're telling me there's no guy in the G League who's like hungry and quick and can rebound that's, you know, just waiting to play in the NBA? They have, I, to, yeah. they have to result to Hakeem Noah and Dwight Howard. <laughs> I feel like these moves are are to appease LeBron James. Like, look, we're, we're making an effort. We want to get you some guys that, that could make an impact. But these aren't impact players anymore. I think that LeBron, LeBron's in the same situation he was with Cleveland in, in Los Angeles. You know, yeah. he's going to have to carry this team by himself. And if he if he's past his prime and he can't do that anymore, then he's just going to have to fade away as a Los Angeles yeah. Laker, unfortunately. Yep. But whatever. Um, the next thing was Tony Parker. He's retiring, and the Spurs are going to retire his number. Um, so I wanted to just take a look at his stat sheet and just give him some give him some love. He played 17 years in the NBA. Um, wow. How many chips did he win? He had a hot-ass wife. <laughs> Did is he still it, married he to Evelyn Gordon? Is he still nah. married to her? No, no, nah, I don't think so. Wow. But uh, we always appreciate those guys that we live. Six-time All Star, four-time NBA champ, uh, the 0607 Finals MVP. Uh, where do you, is he a Hall of Famer? 
I would have to look at. I just typed in Tony Parker into baseball reference. I'm like, why isn't he coming up? <laughs> Go uh, is he a Hall reference. of Famer? To be honest, I don't know if he's a Hall of Famer. Like, I don't know what I I I consider myself an NBA fan and a basketball fan, but I guess I don't know what constitutes like an NBA. What 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 makes a player valid for like the Hall of Fame? I feel like in football, I, I wouldn't know how to spot a you know a uh, a Hall of Famer. Or like in obviously in baseball, we both would know how to see players that are probably headed to the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. So let me look at let me look at Tony Parker's stats. I think I, I think unlike baseball, where you have like markers, you have the five hundred home runs, three thousand hits, uh, three thousand strikeouts, three hundred wins, so on and so forth. There's certain markers that you hit, and you you're pretty much a lock for the Hall of Fame. I agree with you. I don't know if that exists in basketball. I think I think the resume speaks for itself. <laughs> And I think that he he led. Well, he didn't lead. He was he was an integral part of a Spurs team that won four championships. For me, that that should get him in. Um, yeah, I but, see what you're saying. But I, you know, toward the end of his career, his his stats declined. His minutes went down. I think he was a six man by the end there. Um, but he was a good player at a point there. He was a really good player, and he was a very understated player. Like he wasn't. He was never on Jason Kidd's level or like. He did play with Iverson at one point. He wasn't on Iverson's level or Stephon Marbury. I'm not crying, I promise. Um, but he was like, you know, a really good, a really good point guard in the NBA. Yeah, I'll never. I'll just. I, I the lasting memory I have of Tony Parker is just him hitting those floaters in the in the oh finals. Oh my god! Yeah, man. Heat. Like th- that was unguardable, man. Oh my god! He played 18 seasons in the NBA. His stats went say. down, but never that bad. He never. He was never. I mean, his last two years weren't great, but he was pretty consistent all those years. Um, See, I, w- I would say, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. But then, if I if I think if I think Tony Parker's a Hall of Famer, then that means Kyrie Irving could retire today and be a Hall of Famer. And I don't believe that. Sh- too, you know, I yeah, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's true. That's a good point. Um, Basketball is kind of tough for me to gauge these Hall of Famers, man. Like. And does the Basketball Hall of Fame mean as much as it does to other sports? I feel like you don't. we don't talk about that as much. I feel like there's, I just, the there's last... just certain players that you think about, um, that you think about, that you know are Hall of Famers, like Magic Johnson and, 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 and Bird and Michael Jordan and guys like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I can't think of the equivalent of a Mike Mussina. You know what I mean? In the NBA, I was just about to say that Hall of Fame. I was just about to say that, like, yeah, I was just about to say that, like, Mike Messina getting to the Hall of Fame made me pay attention to the point that I was like, wow, like this guy put together a Hall of Fame career. I think he deserves it. Whatever, we could debate about it. But in the NBA, like, if you're the Mike Messina <laughs> version, yeah, going into the Hall of NBA Hall of Fame, you're that doesn't sound like something special. No, no, no. I agree. I concur. Yeah. All right. So there's. There's your NBA talk. The Knicks still suck. Still suck. They're gonna suck forever. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get into TV and film. I wanted to give more time to Interstellar, but I don't want to. This is gonna be like the longest episode of all time. Um, oh, we're they, gonna. Oh, we're gonna talk about Interstellar. <laughs> all right, Interstellar. Oh we're, oh, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> Interstellar, really quick, let me give you some stats on Interstellar. Interstellar got a 72% Rotten Tomato rating. I'm, I don't Ooh. agree with that, but fuck that. Who gives a shit? Anyway. You think it should be better? I think it should be better, personally. It, ha- it had a $165 million budget. It cost $165 million to make this movie. It made $675 million worldwide. $188 million in the U.S. alone. I think if you put the, the cast of this movie... Um, and compare it to any other movie, this might be the most stacked uh, film ever. I mean, Matt Damon was in this movie, uh, uh, Matthew McConaughey, Ellen Burstein, John Lithgow, um, what's that girl's name? Anne Hathaway. Anne, Hath- Anne Hathaway. Uh, Jessica Chastain, Ben Affleck's brother. Like, there's so many fucking people in this movie. Like, I, and I forgot because I rewatched it recently because I knew we were going to talk about it. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot that this guy was in this movie. Um, and everybody delivers amazing performances. And it's definitely the most different Christopher Nolan movie in his entire, I think, catalog or whatever you want to call it. 
but it's still for me like every time i watch it i'm just like left with questions i'm left feeling like kind of emotional i know that sounds weird but like sentimental you know what i mean like the music in that movie really moves you um and i just think it's such a good movie it it reminds me it's like christopher nolan's 2001 space odyssey it's like christopher nolan's um like dedicating his dedicating this movie to stanley kubrick or something um i don't know what did you're you going, think? you're going you're going over my head man not bad sorry man i think you know i think that interstellar was a good movie i think it was a great movie right mm-hmm. um and i loved not that i loved it because it made it made me it made me think about like oh that's so sad you know how they went they touched down on the planet for like a half hour and they came back and lost like 22 years yeah that kind of that kind of stuff got me like kind of like emotional and sad watching the movie but i like stuff like that because i've always been into like you know the effect of space time you know with gravity and everything in in the universe and uh also time travel in general like i've always loved that whole thing um the only problem there's two things that i didn't understand let me tell you what i didn't understand about the movie what was the whole thing with gravity how he said i'll solve gravity for you know before uh what's what's this guy's name before michael kane's character my god the, the old guy man that played alfred in the batman movie yeah yeah michael kane brand dr brand that's yeah. who it was in the movie yeah before he before he sent out uh cooper matthew mcconaughey to through the wormhole and all that stuff before he convinced him to go on this mission this crazy ass mission uh he said go find land go find life on another planet and i'll solve gravity for you but what was that like solve gravity for what what was what effect did gravity have on the crops that weren't growing because i think the whole thing the the it starts off that the world had come to like a complete peace or something okay is what i from what i understood this is how i understood the movie is that earth was basically dying out that there was no there was no you couldn't afford to fight wars. You couldn't afford to send kids to college or anything because the earth is running out of food. All that's left is dust and corn, basically. And mm-hmm. because this is happening and, and Earth's life is, is just they're getting close to the end of Earth, they needed to find another planet to live in. And my understanding of gravity, and it comes up a couple of times in the movie, is if you know these different planets that they travel to like the one where where it's water i forget what the what the name of that planet was um do you know which one i'm talking about with the giant waves like skyscraper the first one yeah like the, they were saying that gravity was 130% more there so it looked like things were weighing on them when they were walking so and not yeah. just that but they were talking about when you bend space and time that the only thing that that you can't travel back in time you can't there's certain things you can manipulate, but the only thing that can cross across this or whatever is gravity. I don't know if that's just Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan just making shit up or if this is really scientifically true or whatever. But my guess is that he's trying to figure out how to make gravity work on whatever other planet that 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 you're living in. Or I don't know. I don't even know, man. I thought. See, that's the thing. I thought. So okay, this movie confuses the hell out of me. That's the case because, uh, when. Okay, let me tell you my <laughs> before I tell you why I thought gravity. And I'm sorry if I'm yelling into the mic. I see my levels over here are high as hell. Sorry. Okay, uh, this movie makes you emotional. No, no, I'm just trying to make sense of the whole thing because he he jumps into the black hole right at the end. Right, he doesn't know what's gonna happen, but he sends the computer pod first because yeah, the computer the close so. Yeah, the the closer you get to a black hole, the stronger the gravity is, which was the case for that planet that they landed on with the big waves. Mm-hmm. The stronger gravity is, the more time uh, slows down. Right. Which means that, which that's like something that people agree on in the science world, that the the heavier gravity is slower time is i guess or whatever the greater the greater the gravitational pull so he sent the pod the tr- whatever it was that you said first like seconds ahead 
which turned into hours or days or years ahead by the time that he was able to relay what he was learning about the black hole back to the computer or just, I guess, back to Matthew McConaughey, right? Mm -hmm. And once he gets in the black hole, at this point, time just keeps slowing down more and more and more. Uh, and they're able to learn all this. That computer was able to learn all the stuff he was able, you know, able to comprehend. And they sent those equations back to the little version, the daughter, his daughter, his tiny <laughs> version. I don't know why I can't just say child. The word <laughs> child just did not want to come out. Of he sent those back to his child. By the time that she was able to understand them, and then that helped solve growing crops again on Earth. So right. there was definitely something to do with gravity and crops not growing on Earth. My whole problem with that movie <laughs> is that it's it's pretty agreed upon in the science world that black holes it's 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 the collapsing of a star or a planet mm -hmm. into one singularity which makes it impossible for light to escape uh, out, right? Mm -hmm. It makes it impossible. Th like, when I saw Matthew McConaughey land in some crazy vortex, I was like, nah, this is bullshit. Because <laughs> everybody knows that if you were to jump into a black hole, your the still image of you will never disappear pretty much because the light or it would just stand it would stay still and then just fade into darkness because the light couldn't escape it fast enough to relay to you what was really happening to to whatever jumped into the black hole i don't know mm. if i'm losing you I, but I, I i got lost like okay when i was watching it the, the gravity in a, inside a black hole is so strong that if you were to fling like a baseball into a black hole mm -hmm. all you would see is the baseball stuck like in time mm -hmm. and then fade away into darkness because the actual lighting of the baseball to your eyes getting sucked into a black hole cannot escape a black hole mm. like it just can't it the gravity is just too strong that light can can't escape it so basically you get crushed you're crushed mm. you you become like nothing so how, did, black hole. so how did he is get out eventually christopher nolan bended the rules of space time i guess i don't know yeah, man yeah, yeah, yeah. that whole thing to be honest with you that whole moment kind of ruined it for me because i'm like okay maybe maybe i'll believe you that he did go inside the black hole and was able to change the past through like these pockets in in the universe whatever but the fact that he was able to get out of there man not nah, like i don't believe that like <laughs> uh, so yeah i was surprised that he was able to get out of there because first off let me let me go back a little bit the moment when he convinces brand and hathaway's uh, character that he's gonna release the, the robots into the black hole and she's like oh you can't do that to to the robots or he was like well we have to sacrifice something and then you have that armageddon mo moment did you get that armageddon moment when he detaches himself and she's like no is that how you felt Wait. in that moment <laughs> Oh, no, no. The Armageddon was on another level, man. And plus, and let me just say this real quick. I, I was also going through a fever at the time of watching ah, Armageddon. So ooh. my emotions were on another. Gotcha. Or on a fever as well. So when I rewatched it, I was like, oh, my God, this is straight out of Armageddon. I'm getting emotional right now. Like, oh, my God, he's going to go kill himself. He's going to go into the black hole. But anyway, that's besides the point. What I don't understand is when he goes inside of the black hole, why does he end up end up in that spot where he's sending messages to his daughter in the past the only explanation that i have is that in the very first version of that whole world you know like the first time he went out there must have not been a wormhole right because mm -hmm. he created the wormhole so i'm talking about the very first people that ran out there probably him he was probably part of it uh that actually went out there to search for life on other planets Maybe he did that at the end of his life. You know, maybe he jumped into a black hole towards the end of his life and created that to be specific in that sense. But we never get to find out. They never explained it. I found that kind of weird, too. And, but the and most thing that I was the thing that I was most upset about was the fact that he made it out of that hole. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and like you said that he you said he created the black hole. So how do you create a black hole? I mean, how, uh, can humans create black no, no, holes? No, no, no. I didn't say he created the black hole. I said that he created the wormhole. Of the to wormhole to the plane. So you know how in the beginning they're kind of like 
we're getting these messages from an from an ex- extraterrestrial source or something, right. and they have they have us in their best interest because they put this wormhole and it dumps us, it dumps us close to three planets, and so so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Basically, like, and then he also says that that same source led him there, and that's how they you know that was coming through the girls' room. That was him the whole time, right? Mm-hmm. So he's doing this, but if somebody had to do it first, I'm assuming that it was like a very dying old version of himself or something. I don't know. I, that's just me. And thinking, so, you know, so th- like, this, this brings up one of the f- one, an, an issue that I, that I had been dealing with a few years ago when it came out, actually, I, I wasn't dealing with it. I just accepted it. Um, but a person that I worked with, Mike, uh, who I taught with in New York city for a few years, so I texted him about it because I wanted to see what was his issue with it again. And he said, if it was humans who created the wormhole for the for their past selves, who created the wormhole for them? Otherwise, it's just an infinite loop. Because if the first humans didn't have a wormhole to travel through, they would have gone extinct. Thus, never sending a wormhole back to for past humans. Uh, which is what you're trying to figure out yourself right now. Was it an older version of himself that created this wormhole? Um so this this also brings up another issue that I had is when they when when Brand recruited Coop uh, Matthew McConaughey's character to become the pilot of this ship, right? Do you remember how that whole thing went down? Yeah, he like yeah Br- he- Br- Brand found NASA. Na- like NASA didn't go looking for him; he found it. So because he because he gave himself the coordinates the coordinates through his daughter's room. That was the ah. first thing he did. You, you remember you remember the first time the daughter was like, oh, there's like an invisible friend in my room or a monster or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When him, when yeah. they got when that window crashed open and uh, the when dust. the window broke open and the dust was flowing in, he was able to figure out that there was like a difference in the gravity in the room. So he he believed there and then he realized that was actually like coordinates to get to NASA. So he led himself to NASA. OK, yeah. so then so then the first time that this happened. I guess is what we're trying to get at here. How did like how did he get how did how did he get to this position in the first place? I don't know. I mean the, like so the wormhole I, I guess it doesn't matter. This is the thing. I don't know what kind of logic they're using for these black holes. If it doesn't matter, if he jumped into the white hole in the white hole, if he jumped into the <laughs> <laughs> that sounds way worse, right? The white hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if he jumped into the black hole that time and ended up peeking into his daughter's uh, room, does it matter which black hole he jumps into? Right. Yeah. So maybe he jumped into a black hole. Maybe he maybe he got sucked into Earth's or the sun's black hole. Maybe by that time the sun had burnt out and turned itself into a black hole and it was sucking the whole solar system in and or whatever. But the point is, is that whoever he had to be the one to set up that black hole room because it was based on his daughter's room. You know, he was only peeking into his daughter's room. That's it. Right. And he said that it was perfect because his daughter was the only one that would believe it and like, you know, stick with it. Kind right, of. Right, so right, it, was, right. it was perfect for him. Um, how the fuck? So I'm assuming. How the fuck do you write exactly. this shit, man? No, I mean, if you think it's it's easier if they just threw out all the logic, but I'm telling you, like, it doesn't make sense that he, whatever, you want to tell me that he gets into the black hole and he becomes a part of, like, space time and he's influencing things and he made it so that it's directly connected to his daughter's uh, room, whatever. But don't tell me you're coming out of that black hole alive, man. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, well, that's what kind of messed it up me a little and, bit. And and the thing the thing is that that they sold this movie with being in many ways scientifically accurate, and it's based on on I guess a study of a, of a doctor named Doctor Kip Thorne, and he was involved in the making of the movie as well, so that they didn't fuck up any any factual things. Obviously, like a black hole, you can't even see a black hole, right? Isn't that like the 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 thing about a black hole or whatever? Uh, you can see you can see light bending around it. That's how they kind of spot it. They see so like you you'll see you'll just see like a bend in mm. the stars that are behind it. You won't see like just darkness. You'll see light bending around it pretty much. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just. I mean, I think I need to research like 
Interstellar explained, and maybe they have a better theory on the whole thing. But this movie definitely needs like a part two or like a prequel or something to explain like how that whole thing him them having the wormhole doesn't bother me as much because if he set everything up, he set up the wormhole as well. You know, he said he put it there. Right. Um. I don't know. I got to say, man, I, I'm impressed that on one viewing that you picked all this shit up because I watched it twice, maybe three times. And each time I'm like, okay, all right, like, what the fuck? Like, how, you know what I mean? Like, no, I want to I actually, now that we're talking about it, I kind of want to watch it again, but I'm never going to get past that black hole part. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, well, I, and, and believe it or not, as dumb as I am, I, that crossed my mind too, that how did he get out of there? When I saw that he survived the black hole, which I forgot that he did, I was like, okay, this doesn't make any sense. Like, how did he get himself out of there? That doesn't make any sense at all. Did he go into the black hole? Like, yeah, yeah, he he dove he dove into the black hole, and then I don't even remember. I think he, he everything went dark, and out of nowhere, he's just like in it. And yeah. I don't even remember how he got. This is how dumb I thought it was. I don't even remember how he got pulled out of there. Like, did someone like? I don't remember. <laughs> they faded to white, and then he was just all of a sudden he was in a hospital bed in the future and his daughter is like a hundred years old or something. Um, the Matt Damon part. Oh I, man, that was crazy. Yeah. I see. I love that part of the movie. That was a good part of the movie. It seemed like the whole time they wanted to go with plan B, not plan A, which is to, so plan A was to find a place where humans can survive and then bring humans there. And plan B was to, to, sustain human life to to create new life in a new planet like to just to to help the human race yeah abandon earth let the humans die out there and then continue the human race on another on another planet and and it looked like matt damon was gung-ho about that plan and he wanted that shit to work out because he didn't believe that plan a could work out and yeah so my question was when I first watched it, I was like, is, are they playing with the Martian here? Like, he's he was fucking stuck on this rocket ship for years and years and years, just like he was <laughs> in The Martian. But then, no, The Martian came out, like, two years later, and he was in a this case, different character. Yeah, no, when I saw him in that movie, I was like, holy shit, like, he did this and The Martian, like, yeah, in right? one, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, he was, I'm guessing that the gravity on that planet was similar to what they were experiencing because I don't think he lost that many years mm-hmm. compared to like so when it, when the when you go back to the planet where the waves are like a thousand feet tall yeah. and everything that guy landed on that planet saw that it was like a normal type of planet sent sent back the feedback to the to the mothership saying like hey like you know this planet has water and breathable air but then seconds later he gets killed but time slows down there. So by right. the time that they're receiving these coordinates, it seems like they're getting it within weeks or days. So they land and then they realize this guy just died or something, you know, right. but it yeah, actually yeah. happened like a long time ago. I think in Matt Damon's case, he he didn't go through that same type of lag. I don't remember. But even if he didn't, he he lied about all the numbers because he wanted them to come to him so that he can get out. Right. <laughs> like, exactly. He, I guess he knew he was going on a suicide mission, but then when he realized that it, he wasn't going to get out, he, like, the fear of death got to him, and he uh, lied about the numbers and got them to go rescue him when actually there wasn't anything there for them. That was fucked so, up. It was. It was crazy, man. And he plays a good villain, man. He, like, Matt Damon is, is one of those guys that... You could you could put him in the in the hero role and he's gonna kill it, and you could put him in the villain role and he's gonna kill it. Like he was amazing in The Departed as a bad guy. Uh, what, what was the other one? Dogma. Dogma. He was also in a movie with uh, Brett Brendan Fraser back in the day where they what the fuck is the name of that movie? It's a really good movie, um, and he played the bad guy in that too, where they like were drawing Nazis on, uh, um, swastikas on the Jewish guys bed and shit like that he played a bad guy that. in that um he plays a really good villain and oceans oceans 11 oceans 11 i'm gonna find the name of that movie before i continue this conversation i'm sorry man interstellar though man it, it definitely has you which i i guess is better than having like a movie with all your answer with all your questions answered but it definitely made me think it was definitely it definitely had me thinking up until that black 
whole moment. Yeah. School. The name is called School Ties. He was the bad guy in that, too. Um, yeah, man. Um, I, I loved it. I thought it was such a good movie. It's really long. It's two hours and 49 minutes. It's filled with amazing quotes, amazing performances. But it's just one of those movies that you're just... I, I just... I, I wish that I could be a fly in the wall when Christopher Nolan was writing this movie because how you come up with this idea and how you keep track of how time moves on this planet versus that planet or how fast you're moving or wormholes and black holes and this and that and whatever, it's amazing to me. I don't know how the fuck he did it, but he he figured it out. And the only injustice, I think, is that it didn't get as much love as you would have thought. You know, for someone to put this much effort into it, to get a 72% uh score on rotten tomatoes i think the the meta score the metacritic score was which is where they they take all the critics reviews and they create a score out of it it was pretty low as well imdb on the other hand ranks it in like it's it's top 50 movies um so i don't know man who to you who do you think stole the show like who was really good in this movie that you were impressed with uh, i'll have to say matt damon yeah, he was really good. Um, like his movie, his part stands out to me. Like I don't, I feel like I haven't forgotten. Besides w- how much time he lost while he was there, while they were trying to get him, I feel like I remember all the other details of his uh, part. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Didn't yeah. have anything else. I'm just kind of blanked out. IMDb ranks it as the thirtieth thirtieth best film, um, and they they decide that based on people who rank it the metacritic credit the metacritic score is 74 so it's similar to the tomato to rotten tomatoes um wait a second 30th best film of all time yeah really so if you go on imdb if you create an account you can after you watch a movie you can give it a score um it's received 1.3 plus million scores for an average of 8.6 Eight point six places it thirtieth all time. Oh, okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah, that's um, wow. The I mean, the, it is. It was a good movie, though. It was a good movie. The highest rated movie of all time in IMDb is The Shawshank Redemption, which is kind of surprising. Do you think that? I mean, I think that movie is great, but do you think it's as good as people make it out to be, or do you, do you really think it should be number one? The Shawshank Redemption. I think it's a really good movie, but no, I don't think it should be number one. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's probably in my top twenty-five all time it's not i think i could name 10 movies that i think are better but that's the thing about movies it's it's it depends on who yeah on who's watching it you know what i mean yeah like i think godfather 2 is better than godfather 1 but it's godfather 1 is ranked higher than godfather 2 um, i would say godfather 2 is uh i don't know man that's a tough one i would i would rank those movie e- evenly yeah um what a, so i think who stole the show i mean i, I Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to give it to fucking... Matthew McConaughey was really good in this movie. Yeah, I don't give that guy enough credit. He's been in a lot of good movies over the years, and all I could always think back is like his Lincoln commercials. <laughs> like those, those annoying, like... Those are mad random. Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Chris Nolan. I know he's, he's, he's the director in it, but the, the intricacies of this movie and... That for you, the only problem is that he comes out of the black hole, which is a big deal. But everything else is so complicated. And to create a story around that is impressive to me. Um, and I mean, listen, the... the bl- go ahead. No, you go. The black hole thing is my one thing that I could point out that just didn't make sense. For all I know, there's some space junkie out there that like really broke down that movie and if I watch that film and I agree with a lot of his points, I might I might change my perspective on the whole uh, you know, movie like in general. Like That's why that's why that I wanted I watched Yeah, that's why I wanted Fern to watch it cuz I wanted to I wanted him to be in this conversation too cuz he's a big space junkie. Um, and I'd be interested to hear his yeah. perspective. So we might talk about this movie again. Don't be surprised, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's one of those yeah. movies. It's a good one, though, for sure. And if we just spoiled it for you, you're you should still watch it because there's Whatever. a lot that went on. Yeah. In that movie. Whatever. And and this guy, fucking Chris Nolan, man, Memento, Insomnia, The Prestige, The Batman trilogy, Inception, Dunkirk. Um, his last 
actually that's not true dunkirk played with time a lot inception played with time a lot and memento plays with time a lot i don't know if you've ever watched did you watch dunkirk no and i never watched memento either oh my god memento is i would say watch memento before dunkirk but dunkirk the, the the way he plays with time in Dunkirk is is it's just you, every time he does it is unique. But Memento for sure is the most I think unique movies you will ever watch. And how he plays with time yeah, has right. never been done before. But this movie Interstellar, like I could talk about this forever because I, I just have so many questions and I just can't. I, there's just not enough. The time. Prestige was a good movie. Yeah, the Prestige. The was Prestige a good was movie. amazing. I. I've watched that movie like three times already, but I still can't figure out, you know, uh, God, I'm bad with names. Hugh, Jackson, Hugh Jackman's character. Yeah, Hugh yeah, yeah. Jackman's character. The only thing I can't figure out about that movie is who's the original Hugh Jackman, right? Like, is it the one that <laughs> got dumped or is it the one that got copied? Great question, man. We might have to do one on, on Hugh Jackman, on, on The Prestige. Yeah. Yeah, I like so that the, movie though. No, nah, that movie made total sense to me though, except for that one part. That's it. Yeah. So in in the future, we might turn this into a separate episode, just because I f- first off, I love movies. I could talk about movies forever, and yeah. yeah, man, why not? So here's what I'm thinking for next week, CT. I have a list of movies uh, that I'm pretty sure we've both watched, and I want to do a, a similar breakdown to this, not necessarily. To the extent of Interstellar, it could be any kind of movie. So I have Superbad, Goodfellas, The Last Dragon, Kill Bill, Old School, Dumb and Dumber. Those are some movies that I listed. Would you want to do one of these movies next week? Talk about it, break it down. What's our favorite scenes, funniest scenes, so on and so forth. I heard Last Dragon. Superbad, <laughs> Super Goodfellas, Last Dragon, Kill Bill, Old School, Dumb and Dumber. And I'm, I'm going to make a bigger list of this. Um, yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty well versed in all those movies, I would say. Which one do you want to do? I'll, I'll let you choose. All right. Flip it. Flip it on you. Oh, fuck. Um, well, let's, let's just let's see. Let's see. We'll see how I feel. All right. I'm feeling super bad right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I haven't seen that in a long I like time, that. I want to rewatch it. Um, and the Last Dragon, I feel like my memory—I'm not gonna lie—I ordered it. I I got it on eBay for like three bucks on Blu-ray, so I'm gonna watch it. Um, oh man! I definitely want to do an episode on the Last Dragon for sure. Um, I might not. I might not rewatch Last Dragon because I'm afraid. I know the last time I watched it, I still liked it, which wasn't too long ago. But I'm afraid that if I watch it now, I'm going to critique it too much. So I'm just going to go based off of what I know From that memory. I like about the movie. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, I could like I could go back and watch the shittiest movie and still love it. So I'm good with that. Mm. Um, And that movie is so quotable. I don't know. I love that movie. All right. So next yeah. <laughs> week, we're going to talk about Superbad. We're, we'll decide whether or not to make this separate episode to just keep it in there. Um, That's all. I think that's all we got. Oh, yeah. I just read somewhere that. They have greenlit the Matrix Four, so the Matrix Four is going to be filmed. Um, I don't know what the fuck wow. that would be about. I'm I'm not even sure that I want a, another Matrix movie. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely going to watch that, but didn't didn't if it doesn't have a uh, Neo in it, then I don't want to watch it. And he definitely died at the end of Matrix Three. So according to this, he's in it. You Keanu, know what's crazy? He's Keanu he's uh, Keanu Reeves is and is doing Bill Bill and Ted Three. Oh, that I can't wait for. I love that fucking movie. Yeah, which one do you like more, the first one or the second one? I like the second one more. I like the I like the first one more, but the second one is funny. Is that the one where they're falling infinitely and they're playing twenty questions? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> that's the one that they're basically the whole movie is them two with with the Grim Reaper. With the Grim Reaper, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that movie is good. like that movie has a really, really crazy impact on my life like i I think i must have seen that movie when i was a kid like more than 20 times so vm varga and i um watched bill and ted a lot and we used to watch beavis and butthead a lot that was like our thing and terminator 2 that was actually another movie that i wanted to add to the list terminator 2 um wow did you ever watch john wick no but i want to now i thought that it was gonna be shitty but everybody keeps saying that it's so good i thought it was gonna be one of those shitty like action movies of like those modern action movies that don't really have like a plot or anything, mm-hmm. but 
they're about to make by 20 they're signed for john wick chapter 4 2021s and at work i heard some people talking about it and they love it they, people they're love shocked it. that i haven't seen it so i'm people like, love I it I yeah see it. same here i'm gonna watch it too i'm in the same boat as you are and then the last thing i wanted to mention is that amy adams is turning 45 i know you're not a big movie buff but i think amy adams in the last decade i think she's been probably the best actress and i'm going to name a couple of movies that she's in and shows so she was just in sharp objects which is amazing um she was in the justice league movies she played lois lane fuck that nocturnal animals really good movie you like sci-fi movies i recommend arrival that's a really good movie um what's another good american hustle she was in uh the master the the paul thomas anderson movie that was really good the fighter she was really good in the fighter She's a phenomenal actress. And I remember she broke in. Um, the first time I saw her was in Catch Me If You Can. But she played like a side role. And she was Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio's, like a girl that he slept with one night. And I was like, who the fuck is this girl? And then I, I didn't see her again until The Office. She was dating Jim for a few episodes. She sold, she sold those purses, yeah. Yeah. And then she fucking broke out. She killed it. And she's she's an amazing actress. So... Happy birthday to Amy Adams. I'm, I'm be honest with you, I haven't seen a lot of these movies. So you have to so here's the ones that I would say you have to watch and I think you would like. I think you would like The Fighter. I'd be shocked if you haven't watched that. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that. That's an amazing movie. It's with uh Mark Wahlberg, Christian Bale's in it. Really good movie. Um The Master's a little complicated. It's a good movie though, but I, don't do that. American Hustle is fucking awesome. Have you seen that? No, I'm offended. I'm sorry, man. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, 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 first of all, I'm not a movie buff in the sense that I can name you actors and directors and producers and references to when this movie, you know, what what this movie took from in terms of like Quentin Tarantino stuff, like you always say. But in terms of watching a movie and understanding it and appreciating it, I am a movie buff in that sense. So. I'm sorry if I didn't watch these movies, but it's like I said, I stopped watching movies a while ago you because should be sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the f- I am sorry. <laughs> these movies, I think you would love The Fighter, American Hustle, uh, but, 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 Arrival, Arrival for sure. I think you would love Arrival and Nocturnal Animals is really good, too. Those four. But everything she's done basically in the last 10 years has been really good. Even her performance in the those DC movies were pretty good as Lois Lane. Um that's it. That's all I got. Damn, 40, 45. She's looking real good for. She's looking real good for a forty-five-year-old. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies uh, and gentlemen. All right. For the third uh, time, little- I'm gonna I'm gonna beg you, listeners, to give us a five-star rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. It, it podcasts. It'll only take you two minutes if that to do so we're seeing that are that people are following through on that so thank you if you submitted a a review and a rating for us if you haven't done so already please 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 take two minutes to do that it helps people to find our show and that's all i got ct and that's all i got as well manny all right Uh, have a good one peace peace out